We're at uh, one of my favourite places, but it's frustrating. Kingsbury Water Park today with Dan and Rachel, who work very hard to try and sort the fish out. Loads of big fish, not just carp, loads of big bream tench, loads of stuff on here. Um, done a lot of work here. Floods horrendously. This was all underwater. It floods really bad. Nothing they can do about that, but we're here to electrofish the nature reserve to hopefully move some monstrous fish out of there into this lake, Broomycroft and Canal Pool, which floods really bad. So it's difficult to get in there because it's all wet. So we're putting all the electrofishing kit on here for now. And then we've got to get the boat in and some nets. But logistically, it's a bit of a pain because it's all wet, like everywhere is. And the plan today, luckily we've got the sun. Very fortunate because we're going to try and send the drone up to try and find some fish. It's very weedy, very snaggy, metal and crap everywhere. It's a nature reserve. And um, so yeah, we're gonna send the drone up, try and locate these fish. Apparently they're very big, and then uh, you can't net it very effectively at all, which we'd like to do, but you just would, it's, not, it's just not possible. So we're gonna let you fish them. And let you fish in, you could, uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you in this video, but um, yeah, I do everything by eye, because if you read a book, and work out amps and this that and the other you, you can't do that because every lake is different it's all down to the metal content in the water a lot of it how conductive it is and some lakes aren't and some lakes are and then you have to adjust the, adjust the settings on the box and a lot of people just go in there and turn it up to 11 and damage fish which is unacceptable so you have to know what you're doing and i do it all by eye because it's easy then because it's the fish showing you what to do so you set it up set it up in the margin so it's, so it's all safe rather than just bah, turn it up Whoa. it's just you can't be doing that so at the moment we're just loading everything up to get in across some wet muddy field and then uh, we'll crack on plus we've also got to repair a tire because the boys have just pointed out we've got a nail <laughs> a nail in the tire probably can't see it but it's in here somewhere luckily there's a washer on it which is stopping it from going down but yeah so we've got the weather with us we just need to perform now Got the kit in, it takes a bit longer than usual getting across fields. The drone, it's a bit windy, I want the sun to get up a bit, can't see a lot in the, in the places you want them. You want them pinned up against the bank really, and then we can put a net across them so we carefully can go in. It's no good if you see a shoulder fish, it's no good herring in there and hitting them because you won't catch them all. You want to tease it and just get them, yeah, we'll show you hopefully if we can track them down, but not easy today. In these little jungleist bits, which are a nightmare obviously, um, mind your face. Um, we've got a theory and we're pretty accurate with it the fact that if you've got an unfenced fishery where otters can get in like this um, the fish learn not to be in these areas a lot of them I'm not saying they're never in here but especially in the winter when there's no one around or <laughs> it's a nightmare because it's deep in here and I'm sure if it was fenced for a, a lot that's never going to be because it Yeah, basically in there you think, oh, there'll be loads in there. If, if otters are fishing, the fish know that if they go in there, they're easy prey for an otter in there, like they would e be easy prey for us. We can nail them in all them trees. So we often find the fish in open water where there's no uh, fencing and you know the otters are fishing. We quite often find fish in open water because I've always said that it takes a lot of energy for an otter to swim from any one of these banks. Oh, he can go out there and have a rest, but he's got to chase fish around. And if they're chasing fish around, they're using a lot of energy doing that. And I'm fairly convinced that's why a lot of these lakes we do, which are big, vast waters, which are unfenced, and you know there's otters around, you don't really find them as much. I'm not saying they're never in there, like spawning, etc. But in the winter, they're grouped up. And certainly there's a lot of evidence that we've accumulated over the years to prove that which is why I never worry about removing marginal snags because people say sanctuary for the fish I don't believe that I think you're better off yes have marginal plants and again I'd rather have Norfolk reed than nothing but it's not ideal in my opinion especially in a fishing lake this is a, not a fishing lake but it, it's all relative like in there you go in there thinking there'll be loads of carp in there and like I say on a French lake where they feel safe they would be but when we do these waters like this they're just not there and it's it's very common 
the, the amount of times they're not there. So it's worth thinking about. Don't think you've got to leave all your crap in just because the otters won't be able to catch the fish because I don't believe that to be true. Tell me my baby What you're looking for If it's the stars and the night sky I can show you it's just one of those things where in a lake like this with the sun out you've got to find the fish if you can obviously you're not going to catch fish electrofishing and people say oh you can you turn the power up you can draw them up from 15 foot it's, yeah you would net if that was the case if it was, if it was deeper there's a lot of blanket weed in here a lot it's all up and down it's like an egg box in here it's crazy it's basically a nature reserve so there's no fishing in here apart from the odd naughty person so the more time we can spend, and there's all this up here, and it's flooded recently, so it's, they could be anywhere. Dan sent me some drone footage a while ago, and they look some awesome fish. We have done this before. Me and Ben came and did it a few years ago, 2019 or 2018, and caught some really nice fish. Because the otters can get in here quite easily. So any we can save from here and put in the fishing lake, they've got a bit more of a chance, a bit more open water with anglers, more people there. Um, but also, you've got to be careful if... I see people electrofishing, it's shocking, it's wanging around and then they'll, they, um, if there's a group of fish, people get excited and just hair into them, that's the worst thing you can do. You have to, you know, if the fish were in here, we'd put a net, we'd go back and put a net across it and they're like, right, we've got them in there now and then instead of chasing them into a big ball, because if you hit 10 fish, there's no way you're going to get 10 fish in the net, you don't really do one at a time. So if they're up tight, just say they were tight up in under these snags, I wouldn't go here and in there, I'd go back, get a net, put a net across there, a net across here. It's all about looking after the fish. And then I wouldn't go straight in there, I'd just keep going around here and they'll eventually, they'll start coming out trying to look for ways out. And you can just take them one at a time, carefully, sensibly, in the boat, deal with them, move them around. That's the way to do it properly. If you muck around, you know, the, it's, it's, you know, you can damage the fish with this. No, no getting away from that. Um, but you've got to do it very sensibly. And it's a big bit of water. We've got the sun on our side. It's a bit blowy. Couldn't see anything on the drone, but the more time we can spend finding them, just kicking all the crap up here. Uh, it stinks as well. Um, there's a munt jack walking over there. But yeah, so the boys are in this marsh bit. Just they're probably not in there, but we've got to eliminate that, and then we can start working back. We haven't even started fishing yet. We will zap round here and do all this. But like I say, if we can find them and block off a channel, and just start teasing them out slowly, that's much more effective and safer and better for the fish. So that's the plan. But we've been around all the obvious places, and then we've just come around here. What happened last time? And already chip skillfully. Look at this bad boy. Look at that. <laughs> we'll take that. Well done, Chip. Good work. So after catching one, which is like the same area me and Ben did many years ago, so it shows they like an area. Just so that island, so we're putting that across there. We're going to put a net across here, which means that whole end is blocked off. We haven't done any other fishing apart from out here with the electric fishing kit. Then we're going to put another hundred meters. They're just laying in net from that point of this bit to here that way then that was blocked separately 
and we're confident the fish are in this area but that means then once the nets are in it's great they'd be blocked in here blocked in here they just get eaten by the otters if we leave them in it and then we can fish all that out knowing that they can't escape and then come around here we're not looking for many fish there's not loads in it and we'll come back round and slowly it's labor intensive the thing not to do is just go hair in and neck because you just if you hit five or six feet you're not going to catch them all not so you've got to keep hitting them and we see people do it and it's horrendous and without nets you chase them around but that said because i've done it before and i know there's about it's like an egg box there's like four or five big holes out there and they do love it there so yeah exciting times Let's see if we can catch any of the bigger ones now we've effectively blocked all of that in. So if there are fish in there, we can chase them around and be fine. Like I say, we don't like to, you never want to stress the fish out. So you try, obviously you do a little bit, but it's cold, it's sunny. And just by catching them one at a time, just keep doing it all sensibly. That's the best way you can do it. It's just so hard now. It's just kicking up the mud there and it's from another six foot here. But yeah, this is the way we like to do it. Safe, sensible, it takes a bit of time, but it's worth the effort. basically a t-shape with a net so it's blocked off there blocked off there this is going to block this off net still, so i'll use it it's about creating lanes and little dog legs where we can chase fish into really very shallow here again <laughs> funny old whoa, funny old place it'd be one of their best lakes if they had fishing on here it'd be so exciting fishing it to be as methodical as you can you just sort of zigzag in open water I wouldn't do this without nets it's a waste of time yes you could catch a few fish we've done uh, on the massive one of the biggest lakes here we've caught quite a lot of fish when it was frozen actually in the winter going around an island and kept catching fish it was basically our only chance but um, you want nets in just just helps massively lakes like this so up and down you've just got to do as much as you can so just a case of trying to push the fish into all under the rotten knackered trees that are just destroying the place. But another 20 years someone will do something about it because they'll realise actually that was important work to do. But <laughs> So we're, we're confident the fish are in this section, very confident, and we've moved them around now so the nets are in place and it's so up and down. I'd, normally I'd go, yeah, we'll net that, but it is, oh, it's just more than an egg box. But we've seen three, we've seen a little common, which is dying away, there's no way we could have caught it, but we'll keep persisting. But luckily, from the actions of all the boys, we've caught this. <laughs> and that makes it all worthwhile. It's a beautiful, beautiful carp. It really is. Yeah, lovely. Well done, chat. Not easy. So, it's, uh, we've caught half a dozen fish, up to 35 and a bit pounds. Um, which is all right considering they only reckon there's about 20 in there, but we've, um, we've, uh, yeah, they're in the same place they were nine years ago we came here, in this section here, behind here, because there's two very deep gullies and holes. It's a nightmare, you can't net it. This is honestly horrendous, but, um, and I am convinced totally convinced the fact that whenever we go to lakes that aren't fenced um, and uh, and they've been ottered and there's definitely otter damage on some of the fish anyway and we know we I've found carcasses here in the past um, but without a doubt when we go to lakes that aren't fenced the fish spend more time out in open water but done I don't know a dozen places which aren't fenced, which are bigger as big as this or bigger, a lot bigger. Some of them, and you go around all the areas you'd expect them. To, and it is the winter, like I say. I'm not. I'm not saying they're never in the edges, but it's uncanny how. And I've seen this as a change in a, over a couple of decades, where you'd, you'd always you'd go straight under them jungle bits, and you'd catch, you'd definitely catch carp. And now they all want to be out in the middle, and you can't blame them because I've, I'm convinced that an otter, even though obviously you can swim to the island and swim to this bit here, is still a lot more energy he's using and time to try and not nab a fish whereas if the fish are always in the margins an otter's like an angler will go well, i'm going to go over there 
but they're just not. They're spending time out in the water, which is always interesting. But a lot of people say to us, no, we leave all the snags for the fish. It's like, okay, well done. But yeah. personally, obviously, if this was mine, if I owned this, uh, I would. I'd leave the Norfolk Reed for what it is because it drops off in deep. But then I'd go and clear all that crap, get it all out. It stinks under there anyway. There's nothing. I don't care what people say. It's rubbish under there. There's nothing going on. And then gut it and replace it. And even if you didn't and you let light in there, that Norfolk Reed would en end up encroaching anyway. But um, a lot of anglers have different opinions, which is fine. It's all good. I just tell people what we do day to day, which is catch fish and give people advice on how to look after them, basically. <laughs> because we've got a nail in the wheel so before we go home we've got a uh, quick pit stop oh well done you got it off good lad yeah he's got it off yeah 